Well, we know every game's going to be tough for us. Um, and we knew they, they're 0 and 4. They, you know, they had battled in a bunch of games. I thought they played with great toughness. Obviously, they stepped up and made some shots. They made some tough ones. Uh, you know, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, make shots. You can win games. We have, we have layups after layup after layup that we did not finish. Um, you know, we shoot for the game 36 and they shoot 50. Uh, they out toughed us for balls in the second half. That's why I called timeout right away. Um, I, I just, you know, we can't, you know, and, you know, Monty's not in there. So now you got mixed up lineups, but, you know, other guys got a rebound. You know, Dej won it. He has nine nine rebounds last game. Now he has two. So we we those are the those little toughness plays. Those and then when it gets tough uh, in the game, and we've been there every game so far this year. When it gets tough, we cannot melt down. We have to execute, and we got to get good shots and cut it to three. Had a layup, didn't make the layup. Obviously, then it turned the tide, and and it went their way. Uh, first question to Kellis Robinette. Yeah, Bruce, you were pretty heated there when you called that timeout in the second half. Was it just toughness that you were mad about, or was it something else? Well, it just, no, I just – they got hustled us for a rebound to start the second half, and I did not want them to go on a run. I just felt I needed to get our guys going. And, uh, you know, it, it obviously it didn't do any good because they went on a run and got up to whatever. And then, to our guys' credit, they battled. They they. They compete. They just got to – we got to be smarter, more disciplined, and we got to get some toughness. And obviously experience will help over the course of time. Thought our bench has gotten better. Uh, you know, Rudy is, was, did better things. I thought Davion was better. Uh, you know, Selton, you know, I, I hope he's getting better. You know, still makes some mistakes. He's got to figure out what he is and what he, how he can score and how we can use him. So then we can feel a little more comfortable to maybe not play Mike in day in days one, 34, 32, probably more, you know, 30, 28. And uh, so maybe we make those hustle plays that make a difference. If uh, you mentioned like the missed layups there in the second half, if Antonio makes that one and Nigel makes one, do you think that final scores may be different? Well, it could have been. I, I thought in the first half where there were a bunch of them, we should have had the lead at half. I, I asked at halftime how many guys missed layups, and I, I bet five – I don't know. You guys have the stats. I don't have it in front of me, but I bet five guys raised their hand and said they missed the layup. So, you know, you make four of those, um, now the score's different at halftime. The game's different. But um, we didn't make them. And then they made, they made tough shots. Credit to them. I, there were some breakdowns on defense, some transition. They got some easy ones in fast break. Um, but uh, – you know, they you gotta you gotta finish your easy plays if you're gonna if you're gonna win games. All right, thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Uh, next question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach. Um, I'm wondering uh, what what is Monty's injury and uh, how much was he missed in this type of game where you did have to go, you know, small ball. Um. You know, he hurt his knee again. Uh, it's the same knee, but a different spot. I, I don't think it's anything uh, tragic or, you know, but, uh, you know, he it, it held him out today. Um, the bad part when you talked about small ball, um, you know, matchups on defense are pretty good against them because they're playing small ball. But on offense to execute our stuff, um, you know, I, you got to had to do some things on the fly today when Monty said he didn't think he'd be able to go. Uh, we knew we had to, you know, mix Selton in at maybe at the four, Mike in at the four, somebody, and somebody had to, uh, you know, kind of figure out what they were supposed to do. So it's, uh, you know, it, it it is what it is. You know, it, it, we it's just part of it. We got to deal with it. Uh, it, it, you know, Tone had played so well last game. He still has nine rebounds, but just a couple of those plays. We need those older guys to carry us. I thought Nigel had four or five really good shots in the second half that he has made, and he just didn't make them. Um, you know, you, you needed somebody to step up when they were making the run to make the right play, the easy play, um, but we did not do that. Uh, speaking of that, did you think, 
down the stretch, Mike was maybe forcing it a little bit too much? Yeah, you know, he's, you know, days one did once, Mike did once, first staff Selton did. I thought we started at the start of the game. Uh, our whole thing was get the ball inside, dominate the paint. And, uh, you know, we shot, I think, three, three, four threes right away to start the game. And then they jump on us. You know, we come back. But now you're, you're chasing the whole time. Started a half, same thing. Get behind, don't make the plays. And now you're chasing them and give them confidence. And then last one, although, you know, Nigel wasn't able to shoot, you know, quite as good as he has so far this year. He did some other good things on offense, assisting-wise. Just how good has he looked, you know, just as a whole, really as a freshman reading this offense? Well, he, you know, he's a good player. There's no doubt. And, and like I said, we're depending on him. You know, we needed him to make some plays, some shots. And, and um, you know, he just – he didn't make them today. And, you know, but yet he still has six assists. And, you know, he, he has five rebounds for a little scrappy guy. And um, he's a great player. And, you know, and, and he even had an injury, had to miss a day of practice also. So, um, you know, it, it, it's part of the growing up – growing up process it, it's painful right now the growing up but uh you know we got to stay with it help them uh you know we got to they got to be more demanding of themselves to be more disciplined in that toughness part we we got to demand that also from them and and hopefully we can make some strides thank you coach uh next question to cameron bradley Hey, Coach, you acknowledged a couple of days ago that UNLV was a team that could score. Um, Bryce Hamilton, David Jenkins Jr., both were in double digits, led the way in scoring. Can you assess their play against you guys? I mean, they, they made plays. Bryce started out, made, you know, it, we were guarding. I mean, we were right there. You can't – he made tough shots. And then Jenkins got going, uh, made tough shots, especially in, this, in that gut chin part of the game. Um, you know, you – Credit to them. You know, they, they, they're older guys. They've been through it. And uh, they made the plays. They made the tough shots. And um, I, I thought they were – I told our guys when, when they play me basketball, which they did in some of those early games, um, they're not as good a team. When they play we basketball, uh, you know, they, they're, they're a much better team. They had 15 assists on 26 field goals. Uh, you know, and Bryce still hit some tough ISO plays and that. So they, they shared the ball a little more. When they do that, I thought that was one thing TJ did last year, got them really to buy into the system and really buy into making people guard and then taking advantage of it. Um, and, and, and that's what they did to us tonight. When you saw Caleb Grill last year at Iowa State, did you see anything different from him this year at UNLV today? Well, he's older. He's a year older. He's stronger. Um, I thought we did a great job on him in the first half, uh, you know, and then he banks in a three, got a little get going, uh, makes one other three, gets a steal, gets a layup. Um, you know, he's a good, good young man, great family. Uh, you know, I, I, we recruited him. We, we wanted him. Uh, you know, he made the decision. He thought we had too many guards. He went to Iowa State. And, you know, now TJ had recruited him. He probably had committed to them early in the first place until TJ went to uh, Vegas. So he's, he's back with the guy that he feels comfortable with. He's playing the four. Uh, he, he's smart. He knows how to play. And he's a little older, a little tougher, a little stronger. Thanks, Coach. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce, I remember back in the preseason, you mentioned that December might be a time when Luke got going with you guys. What's his timetable for return like right now? Uh, he's starting to run now. He's he got out of the pool. He's starting to run on the court. Um, and the next step, I I actually talked to him yesterday. The next step is jumping, to see if he can deal with the, the you know that the pounding, um, and that'll come with some time. Uh, same thing. Carlton finally got into practice this week for you know two or three days. Um, you know he didn't play for three months, so it's going to take him a little time, but. I think that's one of the reasons if we end up Tuesday playing Fort Hayes, I, I'm doing this one. We need, we need reps. We need, we need experience. Uh, and we need to be able to play some of those other guys that didn't have opportunity early. So that that's a possibility on Tuesday. You guys could. Yeah, we, we, we've talked about looking at that. We're trying to get a, obviously a division one game. If something happens, somebody else shuts down and somebody pops up, 
uh, you know, in today or tomorrow. But if not, we'll, we'll, we're looking. We've talked to Fort Hayes about it uh, the other day. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Milwaukee was obviously pushed back till Friday. That's their, I think, a couple of days that they are, they're out of uh, their, their pause and they're, they're able to play Friday night.